Even if you constantly see more and more 3D in websites, 2D animated UIs are still the most requested ways to create website experiences. Motion design is a huge topic, so of course we're not gonna cover everything in this video, but there are some basic concepts to know and understand to professionally animate your websites. Timing is a crucial concept to know to get your animations right, and I see a lot of beginner motion designers that set the same duration for every animation on their websites. They don't think about the size of the element, the visual weight of it, and how much distance it has to travel during the animation. Choosing the right timing doesn't only mean that you see what works with one element and apply it to all the rest. There is a process behind. Let me show you some practical examples in After Effects. I've created this animation in After Effects to show you how to set the right timing for every single element depending on their scale, their visual weight and how much space they take. Let's only take the second half and I want to slide down all the content and show the menu with all the links. First elements that we have to move are the buy button and the images. We press P on the keyboard to change the position of these elements. We create the keyframes and then I want to move ahead to 3 seconds and I want to slide down the content. Let's add some delay to the images to make everything more interesting. And now it's time for the menu. First I want to show the background and we are going to set the timing for the background of the menu. We create a keyframe, we move ahead and we want to set the animation, the duration of the animation to one second. We create another keyframe and then we slide down the background. We add some easing and we are going to talk about easing in a bit, so don't worry. And right now we have the animation in place. Last thing, we want to show the links uh, for the menu. So we go at the beginning of the animation for the background of the menu, we set the position for the links uh, and we go at the end and then we show the links uh, so we can see them. Set some easing just to make everything more smooth and organic some delay and here we have the animation for the menu but every single animation right now is almost one second and what I said is that every single animation every single element has to have its timing. In this example setting the same timing that the background of the menu has to the links of the menu is a huge mistake because everything is slowed down by the perception that the user has by seeing the links of the menu. If an element is really small and it has to cover a small distance the overall animation is going to feel way more slow. For instance, here we want to have the animation for the links of the menu just around 0.5 seconds. And as you can see, everything looks way better and the user doesn't have to wait for the animation to play to see the links. Now, because this animation has two stages, the first one being that we slide out the content, the buy button and the image, and the second stage is that we show the menu, everything needs to take longer. The more complex your animation is, the slower it needs to play to look cohesive and organic. You can squeeze everything in one time span just because all your other animations have a specific duration. You need to analyze your composition, determine how complex it is and set a timing, a specific timing just for that composition to make it look more organic and natural. For instance, just by speeding it up by 20%, you can see that overall animation doesn't look right, it is melted together and is not understandable. Another effect that takes too long to activate or deactivate is another bad timing example. Imagine if you want to see some additional information about a product, but to do so you need to hover over a button but it takes 2 or 3 seconds for you to see the content. Wouldn't you feel frustrated by it? In this detail section, I want to make this button interactive and when you click on, for example, cashmere, I want to show some details about the fabric, so I want to move this jeans button by a tiny bit to show the actual paragraph. As simple as we have previously done, let's set and create some keyframes for the initial position. Let's imagine that we want to set the duration to one and a half second for this animation and we drag the call to action down. Again, we set some easing just to make everything look way more organic and beautiful. Now we have created some space to show the additional content. Go back with the playhead, set the initial position for the actual content that we wanted to display. Let's go at the end of the animation and drag it down so we can show it. Somewhere around that. Let's add some easing to this element and add some delay to the animation. At this point you can see that something is wrong and I know that you know what I'm going to say. Fun fact, if you followed along and you remember what timing did we set for the main interaction in the other composition, it is the same as the one for this call to action, but here everything looks way slower. 
like call to actions, you want to keep these interactions really fast and simple, especially if they have some functional purpose. Going even farther with the conversation, you can use timing to create a hierarchy. If you have a complex section with lots of elements, primarily show the ones that are more important so the user sees them first, and then you can show all the rest. If you show everything together, you make it a mess and the user feels overwhelmed losing interest for the content. Now you set the right timing, but everything looks linear or sluggish, basically not natural and organic. That's because easing is not on point. Easing is the behavior of the animation and it tells how fast or slow an element should move at what stage of the animation. A common mistake is to use too much easing, causing the motion to feel sluggish and unnatural. The good way to do it is not by having an animation that starts extremely fast or ends extremely slow, but you want a smooth transition between the fast and slow stage. Another good practice, keeping the same easing curve throughout the entire experience and throughout the entire UI makes everything way more consistent. So you don't want to end up having four, five, six easing curves because that disrupt the flow and rhythm of the website. Choose one curve depending on the mood of the website and stick with it all the way through the entire experience, especially in complex compositions. A lot of people don't actually think about adding smooth scroll to their websites, but to me, it's a huge enhancement to the user experience and it has more interactivity to the website. Plus, it has a level of polish and attention to detail that can make the website feel way more professional and well designed. There isn't a specific value that I can tell you to make it perfect, but for sure you don't want to be in two scenarios. First, you don't want to create a smooth scroll that is too fast because otherwise the user don't have the time to consume the content in the right way and he doesn't have the opportunity to stop in the exact position that he wants. The second scenario, you don't want to create a smooth scroll that is way too slow because otherwise you create friction between the user and the user experience. Here it's important to get the timing right. You don't want to have animations that start too early or too late. In the first case, you will have too much empty space before you hit the trigger, and that causes the user to think if he has come at the end of the page or if he has some problems with the internet connection. It breaks the flow of the website and it is super annoying. In the second situation, if the animation starts too early, you don't see the animation, so why would you do that? Scroll triggers are super useful to reveal additional information or options when the user scrolls to a specific point of the page, creating a sense of discovery and engagement. It's really important to keep the interaction really simple so the user don't feel lost or overwhelmed. I highly recommend you to implement these in your mockups. By the way, if you want other tutorials on how to create animations in After Effects, let me know that I'm more than happy to help you. It's been a hard video to make friends, but at the end I'm really happy about how it turned out. There aren't many tutorials on the internet about that topic and how I explain it to you, so if you found this video helpful, uh, leave a comment down below with the feedback, uh, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I hopefully see you in the next video.